You're listening to the Young The Mark Wrestling Podcast. Make yourself famous. A podcast covering all things WWE. I have now returned to save the WWE. NXT. The beautiful part of NXT is that when one dream ends, another dream begins. And they eat W. Holy wrestling. I couldn't be more happy. Here are your hosts, Kyle Gagliardi and Jim Tucker. What is going on, everyone? You're listening to the On The Mark Wrestling Podcast, hosted by The Marks, for The Marks, and I am your host, Mr. Pay-Per-View, Kyle Gagliardi, as always, joined by my good friend, Jim Tucker. He doesn't have any belts, but I like to call him... Tucky! Hey, what's going on, Kyle? I always have to throw a little jab at I know, you, Tuck. I know. It and was I- nice not having to tote my belt. Up the stairs from the car this time, since it's already. It's here. right behind you. And Damn it! You don't get to look at it like I do, but hey, maybe I mean, one day. So, nah, maybe Monday. Maybe Monday. <laughs> we do have a pay per view this yes. weekend. It, it might not feel like it, but we do. Uh, we just had a conversation before we started recording. You just uh, decided to pre-order the Xbox over the PS5. So you, yes. confirmed Xbox guy. Yeah, I, I've been. I mean, I've had since the 360. I've had my own systems. My dad and I. That's our. Uh, that's the platform we use. That's like 90% of my hangout time with my dad is spent on the Xbox. Well, so. That makes sense, then. Yes. And now, so, now I, I was going to make comments about it, but now I feel like a dick. No, yeah, thank you for not being a dick. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I ended up ordering pre-orders for myself and my dad. He gave me his credit card. It was going crazy at his house. This is the I middle heard the of class, process the is a pain in the ass. It was cheeks, dude. They thought, because they set a time, that it was going to be easier. Wrong. Um, so... Mine is pre-ordered from Target and will ship. I will get it after. Oh, it's shipping. It, 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 it'll, I'll get it after release day, the 13th through the 16th. My dad will pick his up at Target in Highland, or at Best Buy in Highland on release night. Oh, he's, he's not waiting. And he got his pre-ordered about an hour and a half after mine. See, that's crazy to me. And maybe it's just because my dad is too dumb to figure out gaming systems that you yeah. have a – your father – Upper upper in age, middle age, we'll say. Yeah, I'm not going to call 50. him old. Oh, that's yeah. younger younger than Ralph. But like, I never had that bonding relationship. I mean, I did when I was growing up. When I lived there, like I played PS2, I'd play NBA games. Yeah. Uh, that was about all Ralph could figure out. Which, yeah, I mean, that's we kinda... we only had video games and systems in my house because my dad bought them. See, that's cool. Like, I, think... I had my for the longest time, my Xbox profile was my dad's profile. So he what had... was the gamer tag? JTUG 65. Okay, Still his. And now mine's JTUG 89. I'm assuming 65 is the year he was born. Yeah. And then my cousin's is NTUG double zero. So that's, you know, that's like the, the re- creativity you know. in the Tucker family yeah. gamer tag yeah. wasn't hey. off the charts. Hey, but, you know, we're running. You know? I, my first gamer tag on Xbox was probably not the smartest. Obviously, I put gags in there, but I put 3463, three, which is the numbers of my address where I lived. Okay. Yeah. So, like, if you kind of figured out what city yeah. I was from, you may know. At where that I point, live. you could Google three four six three, and you have a list of <laughs> <Yep>. like. <laughs> There's only a few be one of these houses. Yeah. <laughs> so, if you're listening and you you know what city I'm from, <laughs> you know where my parents still live. Yep. But yeah, I've been. I'm a PlayStation guy. Uh, well, I had an Xbox three sixty, and then I moved back to the PS four, and now I plan on. I didn't pre order like you. I'm gonna wait it out and see what happens, and yeah. then I'm gonna get the PS five. I'll probably end up getting the PS5 as well. I'll tell you what I don't want to get is any WWE video games. Because Cheeks. Battlegrounds? If they give it to me for free, like right. Fall Guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's you. on the same level as Fall yeah. Guys when it comes to, like, free to play, pay to get the loot boxes for skins for your characters or whatever. But yeah. Still haven't won a Falls, Fall Guys game. Really? You Maybe. Have you? No. Oh, okay. Maybe. No. You probably haven't played since. Nope. I only play with people. I've never played on my own, so... I, I do better when I play with my own. It's probably because I zone in. We're not talking like, shit the whole time. <laughs> I almost won it. I was streaming with one of my buddies. He's on Twitch, and uh, I almost I got second place. I dove for the crown, and the guy got it before me. <sighs> and that was talking video games with yes. the On The Mark Wrestling Podcast. But we're here to talk wrestling, yeah. you know? But uh, before that, we got to re- remind everybody that we are a part of the Overtime Sports Network at otsportsnetwork.com. And if you wanted to check us out on Twitter or Instagram, Tuck, where would you go? It's easy. At underscore OTSN. That's it. 
Yeah, and if people ask why is the underscore there, because you need five characters. Yeah, so deal with it. I don't think you need five characters anymore, by the way. Oh, but really? At, at the at the time, I feel know. like we can't yeah. change it now. No, no, it is what it is. Like it's out. We're it, we're in. We're at underscore OTSN everywhere. That's where you can follow us. And if you want to find us on Facebook, go to facebook.com slash OT Sports Network. We got a live show debuting next week between me. And the host of the Region Degenerates podcast, Mikey Wilson. I'm called excited for that. OTSN Happy Hour. Stick with it. Just okay. stick with it. Well, why are you saying that? Because my live some, shows that just die? No, sometimes you pull the plug on shit too early, I like, think. Well, Gambling with Gags was for a reason. Well, I mean, yeah, you were I was dead. losing money. Yes. That, that, yeah. That's a valid reason. What yes. was the other show? I, March to Madness, we didn't do as much. Well, and this year, Cheeks. The, the COVID situation made things difficult, but... Also, the guys that I do it with weren't as available. But, yeah, the plan is every Monday for, at 6.30 p.m., we're going to be talking everything in the sports world. It's kind of like you ever seen the show, Pardon the Interruption? Yeah, I like that one. Yeah, we're going to have, like, a, a tab on the side so you'll see what topics are coming up, do some quick hits, and once it reaches an hour, boom, lights out. We'll see you. And we'll see you. Because nobody wants to listen to more than an hour. Right? Yes, that's true. Like, Unless you're listening to the On the Mark Wrestling Podcast, of course. And and sometimes we go over. Sometimes we do. But maybe not this week because all we really have to talk about is the Clash of Champions pay-per-view that's happening this Sunday. But our weekend in wrestling doesn't start on Sunday. Correct. We have another Warrior Wrestling event we are attending yes. this weekend. I'm glad that, you know, I was not supposed to be able to go to this it's one. true. I was supposed to go last week, and I'm like, I, I'm not with the boys. It's going to be chilly. You know, Mister was like, I, "If we don't go, it I was really mad. cold last Saturday, yeah. wasn't it?" Yeah, and we did a we did a bonfire on Saturday. That was cool. It was awesome. Perfect. G yeah. and I and Mister um, and Skinny Tucky. Yeah. Hey. hey. Um, so yeah, Warrior Wrestling. I will be late. I'm, I think my arrival will be about seven thirty. So I'll probably miss the first match. But is is bell time seven again? Yep. I don't know why I thought it was eight. They'll do a. They'll probably do a pre pre show match. Bell time is seven again. My game is at five o'clock, two hour time limit, twenty five minute drive. So, yeah, I will be, be changing in the car as I'm driving. We'll you going to bring your worry wrestling shirt that we have? I know I'll have it. I don't... forgot I had it, but yes, <laughs> yeah, I, I will wear it. that and probably a hoodie, about sixty <laughs> degrees. So it's going to be a high of eighty during the day. So yeah, it'll probably it'll be a be little nice. little warm to start, but then once the jeans, sun goes jeans down, jeans and a hoodie that's going to be great. Ah, it's the best time of the year. Unfortunately, though, a couple names aren't on the card anymore. We are we know about the Lance Archer situa- situation. You know, he's got the COVID-19 and whatnot. Alex Zane was in contact. That's the guy that I believe was supposed to face Brian Cage. Yep. And now Ben Carter, who we have seen on AEW Dynamite a few times, he also won't be on the card. So hopefully we don't lose any more bodies here, Duck. Yes. Falling fast. Uh, They act like they have replacements ready. I'm not convinced. Well, I know this, and this could be. Beastman's at the ready, though. (laughs) Oh. I know Vogus wants that. I saw somebody tweet at Pentagon and Ray Phoenix. Uh, they're like, hey, come to Chicago and help these guys out. Pentagon liked the tweet. Hey. I'll take the Lucha Bros at Warrior Wrestling. Yes. Might cost you a pretty penny, but, you know, hey, it might be worth it. But, yeah, looking forward to Saturday. We'll be going with Ryan Vogus and Mikey Wilson, the guys that compete in our pay-per-view predictions contest. I don't know if Ian is doing the main roster predictions. Well, it's out there, but he, he's he, our AEW champion. Don't yes. forget it. Going to give him a shout out where his shout out is due. But uh, we're here to predict Clash of Champions. I am the current OTM pay per view champion, so I'm looking to retain my title as it sits right behind Tucky as we speak. And the first matchup on this show, Tuck, we have a pre show match. It is the Raw Women's Championship. The champion Asuka versus Zelina Vega. I honestly never thought we would see. A title match in 2020 involving Zelina Vega. But Interesting, here we are. yeah, no doubt. Um, Oscar by a million or what? Got to be Oscar, right? Yeah. Like, no hesitation. But that's not taking anything away from Zelina Vega. I like how they're kind of giving people new opportunities. You see Zelina now, obviously getting this match. Peyton Royce is kind of doing her own thing as is Billy Kay. So yeah, at least they're shaking things up a bit, right, Tom? Yeah, I'll take it. But uh, we're going to go with Asuka in the opening matchup to retain her Raw Women's Championship. It just seems obvious. So uh, we'll move on to the main card here. The SmackDown Tag Team Championship match. Cesaro and Nakamura, the champions, taking on the Lucha House Party. Tuck, give me your thoughts on this one. Um, 
Yeah, I think this is going to be a squash too. I think I don't think Lucha House Party has the juice to be the champions. Um, should be a great, could be a great match. Like Lucha House That'd Party be. is sneaky good at res- like I don't think I I don't, I don't think they're I think they're underrated. Yeah. Um, I don't I don't see a way that it makes sense for them to earn the tag titles though. And and you know what's weird about when I looked up and down this card, I was like, I feel like a swerve is coming somewhere. Like some team or person is going to win and we are not going to see it coming. I think this could be one of those matches. I'm not bold enough to predict it, Tuck, because I'm holding on to that title that's behind you. Uh, but I do think we've also been seeing kind of some cracks in the Lucha House Party. If you watch SmackDown the last couple of weeks, their backstage, you know, segments that they're having, there seems to be a little friction between the group. Yeah. So maybe Kalisto turns on him or Lince Dorado. I don't really know, but it seems like the split is imminent, and I think Cesaro and Nakamura will retain their SmackDown Tag Team Championships. And we don't have the picks for Vogus and Mikey yet? We don't. I, I To be fair, I did not send them a card. Okay. So I guess that one's on me. But then again, I also put this blo- or uh, outline together last minute. So. Got it. That's how we roll over here at OTM. You know, we just got to go and go with the punches. Uh, Raw Tag Team Championship match. We got the Street Profits, the champs, taking on Andrade and Garza. Didn't we just see this match? Haven't tuck? we seen this like eight times? Is eight eight it might feels be low like it's forever, dude. I mean, it'll be good. I'm sure the match will be solid, but you really think about it, the Raw Tag Team Division is slacking. Yeah, there's not much there. Who do you yeah. got in this one? I went first last time, turd. Oh, <laughs> fuck <laughs> you. <laughs> All right, so you know how I was saying they might try to swerve us a little bit on this pay-per-view? Since I thought Garza and Andrade were going to be splitting, I think they're just going to throw the belts on them. Why right. not? Because mm-hmm. it's the WWE and anything can happen. Uh, I don't really have any good reasoning for this one. Usually I have an explanation about it, but Street Profits have had a good run. It's just... Where do we go out from here with the Street Profits? So yeah. maybe if they can be the ones chasing after this, have Andrade and Garza have a short run. They're not bad wrestlers. There's actually, they're actually great wrestlers. I, yeah, I enjoy them. So I'm going to go with Andrade and Garza. What about you? I'll stick with the Street Profits to give us um, a, a little bit of – what is the word I'm looking for? Parody. Yeah. A little bit of, uh, of a mix-up. Um, I don't lean too strongly. I – I would. I won't be surprised if Garza and Andrade win this match, but um, I think we might still be heading to Splitsville with them. So the Street Profits retain, and then they become the longest reigning tag team champions ever. I don't know what the reign is, but we're. In I it. don't know what the Raw reign is. I know that the New Day has the SmackDown yeah. belts for sure. So maybe they'll give them the Raw. Yeah, maybe rain. I don't know. I mean, they're, it's not like they're doing anything wrong with the belts. No, it's just WWE really there's just, doesn't. There's not a ton. There's not a ton of infighting to make that those belts seem like something. And if you look up and down the tag team division, a lot of these teams are individuals put together just for the sake of yeah having matches together. I mean, Andrade and Garza, Nia Jackson, Shayna Baszler, Cesaro and Nakamura weren't really a team until they held gold. Right. Yeah, you got to build true tag teams, but yes. then they'll just split them or. Have comedy segments with the Street Profits. Mm-hmm. Talking about the Viking Raiders over here. Viking Raiders, uh, RIP. Yeah, was, no doubt. What was it? Ivar took that spill the other day. Yeah, pretty dead. It wasn't great. No. So uh, T's and P's out to him for sure. But you're going with the Street Profits. Yeah. I'm going with Andrade and Garza, which then takes us to this next match, Tuck, that I'm really excited about. You want to introduce that one for us? I'm not looking at the doc. All right. The Intercontinental Championship <laughs> ladder match. Intercontinental Championship ladder match. Jeff Hardy, the Intercontinental Champion. Sami Zayn, the guy that says he is the Intercontinental Champion. He never lost the bell. And the phenomenal AJ Styles. I don't think I'm going out on a limb saying that this has to be the match, match of the match night, of right? Night. Yep. Like, this is going to be great. Yeah. You have you have the originator of you have Mr. Ladder Match and Jeff Hardy. Um and if anything, his athleticism is down, but his ring savvy and creativity. mature and creativity, he knows the way that that match should flow and feel. AJ Styles, one of the best professional wrestlers uh, yeah. on the planet, and Sami Zayn, who who knows what he's doing as well. So yeah. you have three vets. Nobody needs to carry the other one, which in a lot of times in multi-man's 
they build in spots where, you know, like it Ronda makes, Rousey, yeah. her first match was in a tag, right? Like, you have three bona fide wrestling veterans that know what they're doing um, and are very capable. Yeah. Um, this can go to you could any of these guys, and, right? And you have a compelling argument for all of them. Do you give it to Jeff Hardy because he is the ladder match king? Do you give it to AJ? I th- I think AJ is going to go on a run here without the gold. I was going to say, I think he's the least odds here yeah. if we're having to pick. And I also... I <sighs> Can I call AJ's next feud, by the way? Yes. The Fiend. Oh. I feel like it'd okay. just be, it'd be cool. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know the reasoning behind it, but they'll find a reasoning. But yeah, so my thought is AJ goes off and does other things. But yeah, so you're between Sammy and Jeff as well. And I think Sammy is the sneakier one of the two. That he might he might see something and find a way to get it, like steal the title there. Uh, so I'm going to go with Sami Zayn. So obviously I'm between Jeff Hardy and Sami Zayn as well. Uh, Jeff Hardy kind of just recently got this belt maybe a month or two ago against AJ Styles. And uh, really we haven't done a lot, and I like what we're doing more with Sami Zayn. He's on, he's on the chase. The right? the pettiness the that's chase saying, is easy. and he's got gripe. He never really lost that, belt. right? Like he just went away for COVID precautionary reasons and said, yeah, or whatever, "See ya." Yeah, right. So with that being said, I think the one that's doing the most in this feud is Sami Zayn. Let's put the strap on the guy. I mean, yeah. Jeff Hardy really doesn't need this reign. And if rumors he wasn't are, holding the title for long when he got it, was he? Who? Sammy? Sammy Zane. No. Right. I, he just got it from Daniel Bryan, I believe. Right. That's what I thought. Which is another option. You can go after this. We know Daniel Bryan's been off TV for months. Yeah. Maybe Daniel Bryan comes back and says, hey, Sammy, we have unfinished business as well. The good thing with this match right here is a lot of these guys can still find other things to do if they lose and you know, not yeah. get shoved down the card. Right. So I'm going with Sami Zayn as well. I think that'd yeah. be the most entertaining option, and uh, I think he would do a lot with the IC title. But regardless, ladder match. Anything a, could happen. Going to be a banger, that's for sure. Uh, next matchup after that, we got the Women's Tag Team Championship matchup. Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler, the champs, taking on the Riot Squad. Uh, I think this one's kind of easy because it's very early in the reign of Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler. I don't think they're going to hold the belts for a while. I think this will be a shorter reign, but this would be too short, in my opinion. The Riot Squad are just kind of getting back into their groove. They'll eventually probably hold these belts, but I'm going to go with Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler here, Tucky. I'm going to agree with you on this one as well. I I just don't think the Riot Squad, where they're currently at, have enough. Like, even their continuity between the two of them will not be enough to take down two monsters, right? Baszler's got to be booked as a monster. Nia Jax is a monster. That That's a strong one. Um, I don't think the Riot Squad have enough to outsmart them. But the Riot or, Squad's getting there. Like, we're yeah, rebuilding right. them back yeah. up right now. And I, th- I agree. Um, but I, I don't think at the current time it makes I, – I don't think that's the, the pair to do it. So well, then again, at this current who, time. But who, you could also extend it. You can extend this I, feud. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. they got to find a way. Because if you think about it, Iconics are gone. Yep. Sasha and Bailey are gone. Mm-hmm. Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross are gone. Yep. Speaking of that, thoughts on the Alexa Bliss stuff with The Fiend? Love it. I think it's kind of kitschy that, like, when you say The Fiend, she just goes into a trance. But, yeah. like, it's another element. It's another layer. So I'm It's uh, giving Alexa Bliss some, you know, just more character work. Like, she's showing that she can do more than... What she was doing before, which she, she's just not like the sassy like biatch yeah. kind of thing, yeah. Which she's really good at, yeah, no doubt. But best. having her with Bray Wyatt, it's another wrinkle under that character as well. Yeah, we know he's lurking. He just doesn't need to be involved in these lesser pay per views. So I think yeah. that's why they're kind of holding off on him for sure. But we're both going with Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler here. I would assume the rest of the boys picking are going to follow suit there. The, the yeah, in reg- to this point, I think the two the two big flips in, in record, you know, changers Men's are going to be the Andrade Garza and Street Profits and then the ladder match up to this point. I think we're I think we're going to stay chalk with the Vega and Oscar match. Um I wouldn't be surprised if Mikey picked Lucha House Party <laughs> in that matchup. That's a Mikey But then move. again, the weird thing is it could happen. I don't think it's, there's he no went, chance. Hey, he got hot. Mikey had a good round. 
in, at the last pay per view, right? I don't think it, so. Mikey, or no, was, that was the three way tie. Two yeah, SummerSlam. So Mikey, I don't think watched the the last pay per view because on our live show that we did last week, he goes, "I'm still the champ, aren't I?" I go, "No, no, no, you're not." Have you not even checked Twitter, bro? <laughs> <laughs> I go, Have you not seen that two sweet Kyle? Yes. It's all over. By the way, Erica Marini hates the the Gagliarda gifts in the Rock's face. I do too. I look great. What are you talking no. about? It, no, on. I like you the way you are. <laughs> wow, that's the nicest yes. thing you've ever. I don't. I don't like Rock Liarda. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe if you defeat me for the championship, yeah. you won't have to see that. Because so that... freaking hard to win the title outright, though. It is, it is, and that's why I'm glad I'm gonna try to skate by here. <sighs> so we'll see here if this match helps. The United States Championship match. Bobby Lashley, the champ of the Hurt Business, taking on Apollo Cruz, the man that used to hold that belt. Uh, Tuck, first off. What are your thoughts on the Hurt Business so far? Kind of going toe-to-toe with ret- Retribution on Raw. I, at the beginning of the Hurt Business, I'm like, well, it's something for him to do. That's cool. Yeah. And now, like, the shirt is in the cart. And that's how I indicate if I yeah. like somebody or not. Like, um, they, they, Raw, WWE has stood to benefit from the Hurt Business, and thank God MVP felt like joining the Royal Rumble. We talked yep. about that last time mm-hmm. as well. Lashley feels tough. He 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 feels intimidated. It's feels legit. Like a force. Yeah, it's not They're, a fake tough guy. Yeah, get Ricochet in there. Get the superheroes of real shit out of there, and you know, like they, I could see them being dominant because you have all of the different pieces. You have the mouthpiece that can move the pieces. You have the enforcer. You have the athletes. Two so. athletic guys, yeah. yeah. I would like to see Sheldon and Cedric maybe go at the tag title. Yeah, and they, like, that's not crazy. I, I wouldn't no, be shocked if I, they won a set. You know? I mean, if it's if it's the street profits that do retain, that feud makes sense. Cedric yeah. and uh, Shelton versus the street profits. And the street profits can st- take that loss because the Hurt Business gets involved. Street Profits still look strong. There's just there's a lot of options you have with that. And honestly, there's not a group, and I think Hurt Business might even look stronger than Retribution right now because they've laid them out a couple times. Yeah. They stood up to them, and we know Retribution has five on-screen members, but they have their hoodlums that show up on occasion and whatnot. Retribution's a mess. It's just ass. T-Bar, Mace, Slapjack. People agree. Like They were like, yeah, those are good names. And I'm not saying the wrestlers, but like Slapjack. Why Mace? can't we just call them by their real names and say they have gripe with creative? Right. Shane Thorne. We know who that's Slapjack. We know Dio Madden's Mace. We know Dominic Dijakovic. Dijak. Why not Dijak? T Bar for Dominic Dijakovic, a guy who had amazing is it matches. T- is a T Bar like a weapon? It's T Dash Bar. I don't know. Yeah, a Slapjack's okay. a weapon. Yeah. Mace. Somebody was like, uh, go to your utensil drawer, uh, grab the first thing Spatula. that you have, and that's what you're... Uh, Greater. <laughs> I kind of want to do it right now, but it's too far away. Jeez. But the match here, Bobby Lashley versus Apollo Crews. Uh, is it me or you? You. Bobby Lashley. I mean, unless the R- Retribution clan shows up and costs them or this ends in a no contest, I still feel like... Clash of Champions will end, and Bobby Lashley will still be the United States champion. So, yeah, I'm going with Bobby Lashley. Bro, do you know what a slapjack is? Yeah, isn't it like when you ejaculate on your hand, and that's the Urban Dictionary nope. version. That's the Urban Dictionary. Well, this isn't a PG show, so. <laughs> that's not it. A sl- well, I will a, show you. many different images, but a slapjack. I'm finding it. Um, when you Google slapjack, it's like a leather, like slappy thing, like very old school. All right, can I say mine within put out a disclaimer that if any kids are listening or people that don't like gross things, there's a 30 second button. Might want to hit that once or twice. And we're giving you a couple seconds. All right, slapjack, Urban Dictionary, nope. the, the act of uh. ejaculating on one's hand and then slapping another person in the face. Today I gave and Melinda. And that's what retribution <laughs> will do. Raw in your face. Well, it makes sense. Yeah. Raw slapjack. Putting two. Can yeah. you just pick the United States Championship? <laughs> Lashley. Lashley. Yeah, that's and easy. That's that. <laughs> and, that, <laughs> and that was talking the United States Championship match. We went a lot of directions with that that I didn't expect us yes. to go, but here we are. Uh, three more matches on the card. Uh, first one I'm going to talk about here: is SmackDown Women's Championship. On the line between Bailey, the champ, and Nikki Cross, 
Uh, weeks ago, I know I said I believe that Sasha and Bailey, whenever that match does happen, it doesn't need a belt. I still believe that they could have a match and the belt is not on the line and it's still legit. Like this is the go-to feud right now on SmackDown. But that being said, I just don't believe they think that is the route to go. I think their plan is to eventually get the belt on Sasha Banks' hands and it makes more sense for Sasha to take the belt from Bailey than it does from Sasha to take the belt from Nikki Cross. Yeah. So I, I, I would like Nikki to win. I think it would be cool, but not enough build, not enough time. I don't think it makes sense. The The chase hasn't been long enough or great enough. I'm going with Bailey as well. Um, the only thing we differ on to this point is the freaking tag, by the way. Is Hell in the Cell the next pay-per-view? That's like December, I thought, right? No. Survivor Series? No. We did this last time, too. We literally read off the, the pay-per-view schedule on the last, the last show. I think. Yes. Yeah, I don't think you're right. I thought we talked about it. <laughs> we did, but I, I'm trying to find it right now. Uh, I thought it was supposed to be Hell in Here we go. December. We're doing a little scrolling as you can play the in Jeopardy Chicago. music in the background. Boom, Class boom, of Champions uh, Takeover is on the 4th, which we will have our Takeover predictions next week. You can stop doing the damn music. Hell in the Cell is in October. Yep. Well, you said it was in December. Yep. There's supposed to be a crown jewel in November. That's not happening. No. <laughs> War Games is November 21st. Yeah. Survivor Series is November 22nd. There's a Starcade event. Jesus Christ. They are running a lot of shows. So, yeah, there's a lot more opportunity to do Bailey and Sasha is what we're getting at. What's December? PLC. Ah. So, hell, so. Got it. Is when we'll probably see that for sure. So, the two big matches. The first one, the Universal Championship. Roman Reigns, the Universal Champion, taking on his cousin, his family, his blood. Jay Uso in a Universal Championship match. I bet you no one saw this one coming, Tuck. An Uso in a world title opportunity. In yeah. A- um, okay. And you get to go. And I'm picking Roman. That's all I got. I don't. <laughs> I don't know what else I need to say. What you, What do you expect from this match? Like, I think it's gonna be a good match. I, yeah. I it could be match of the night. I I like ladders though. That's my thing. Yeah. Um, but I think. Pairing Roman with Paul Heyman right now, I think they've just got to keep the juice on the non ooze. Oh, I see what you did there. You're picking Jay Uso. I'm wearing an Uso shirt, but you're not picking him. Down since day one ish. I've been down with the Usos since day one, man. But I, I feel like this matchup is happening because one, Roman Reigns said this on After the Bell. He feels like since this is going to be his first singles match back after taking a couple months off. Why not have a match against your blood? Like, you know what's going to expect from him when you're in the ring. You have a yeah. comfortability there and whatnot. So I think that had something to do with it. And also, I think this is eventually leading to some type of bloodline stable. I think once the other Uso comes back, he'll probably join forces with Roman, with Paul Heyman. Eventually, the Usos get the tag belts, and Roman has the universal title. And the bloodline holds all the gold on SmackDown. Yeah. I just think that makes sense. So... I think Roman will win this match. Like you said, it will be competitive. I don't think this is going to be a squash by any means. Yeah. But I think it eventually leads to Roman Reigns bringing in Uso, and they kind of create this bloodline fla- uh, faction going on here. So, And they've kind of prepped you for it on on uh, recent shows by having them pair together and and work and interact together. So Backstage segments. Yeah. Tag matches. Last week against... Uh, Sheamus and Corbin, I believe it was. Which, by the way, I know I never watched SmackDown Live. I don't think you do either. But it's it's so much better than Raw. Yeah. It's a good show. I enjoy watching SmackDown. Yep. Sometimes I enjoy watching SmackDown more than NXT. That might be a take. And Raw's not great. You know? Every time I see Retribution on my screen, I want to turn off the channel. Yeah. I don't want to watch more, I'll tell you that. And they're giving us a lot of them now, which... It sucks to I don't we're not going it, back nope, there. It's just nope. It's just not good. Yeah. Everybody knows that already. So the main event it might be the main event. We don't know if this is confirmed. The WWE championship ambulance match between Drew McIntyre and Randy Orton. The way I'm looking at this, Tuck, is that Drew has gotten the best of Randy in almost every situation. And in, in matches and backstage, on screen, all of that. If this stipulation wasn't a thing, if this was a straight-up match, I think I would 
pick the opposite of what I'm about to say. But I think the plan is to eventually save another title run from Drew McIntyre when the crowd comes back and you can get that pop. I don't, you have to take advantage of Randy Orton right now. He's too good. He's too hot. You at least got to give him a run for a month or two. You just have to. And there's also the possibility that Edge is coming back soon and they can rekindle that for a little bit. Yeah. But I think the ultimate plan will be that Drew eventually gets that title back. And uh, maybe that's when the crowd returns. But I think Randy Orton's too good right now. Drew McIntyre's had a good reign. It's been solid, but I think it's time. I think we pulled the trigger here. Randy Orton, new WWE champion. Wow. Yeah. You didn't see that one coming? Not really, no. I am picking Drew McIntyre because I think Randy Orton and Edge get back into that. That gets Orton out of the way for Lee and McIntyre to have a, a good, sustained program. You think they do face-face? Yes. Okay. I think it would be a great match. They have been teasing it. Yes. Kind of on Raw. So, you know, that's just kind of where my head's at. And I really like Drew McIntyre, and I want him to win. So is there a chance Edge so – this is an ambulance match. Any chance Edge gets involved here? Is he driving the ambulance? Maybe. I don't shoot, know. Shoot, I think that's the reason Randy wins because I think if you had Randy pin Drew McIntyre, that kind of hurts him. Yeah. But Drew can still have that reasoning, hey, you never pinned my shoulders down to the mat for three seconds. Yeah. You put me in an ambulance. Okay, cool. But I still deserve a shot at that WWE Is that team. a cinematic – that no, won't be cinematic, no. Will it? they've had ambulance matches before. Okay, good. Believe it or not, Dave Buzik, who we've referenced in the past, he was uh, the guy that took the bumps for the ambulance match between John Cena and Bray Wyatt. Payback twenty. There we go. Yeah, fifteen or twenty sixteen. Yeah, if you want to check that one out, I think that's the last one I remember. But yeah. they've, they've had a few. But yeah, I think it's time for Randy Orton. Wrong. I don't think so. I can't. I'm. A, I'm getting the title back. After this. What is it, two different? Yeah. Between us? Street Profits and the McIntyre match. You know the others are going to have different ones that are weird and whatnot. Yeah. Well, Mikey will. Vogus will probably... Uh... Well, but, like, any the two that we differ on, both sides make sense. Um. So, yeah. I just think, I don't know, I don't know how many, how many titles they want to change hands. You have it at two... I, that's Three, what I, Sammy. I never want to go more than two. Yeah. I feel like once you're doing more than two, you're taking the shine away from other people, you know? And I, I just think that this is such an unhyped pay-per-view that they're just going to kind of stay the course, get through it. And... The match card's solid, though. If you look it up is. and down it, like... There's there's good matches. Like, even even uh, Bailey and Nikki Cross, that's going to be a good match. And I, I feel bad for Nikki because I think she eventually does deserve that women's championship. It's just what she's facing yeah you can't give the strap away but nikki eventually could be a good uh baby face champion but maybe they wait for that with alexa bliss yeah maybe they start a feud for the belt eventually down the road i don't know but yeah up and down that card it's pretty solid uh my overall excitement level five six i was gonna say four yeah four five i won't even watch it and live because the packers play sunday night Will you be watching it live? I have a game at five on Sunday, so I'm gonna. It'll be live-ish, like catching up. I think I'm, the only thing I'm gonna catch is the beginning. So what you probably aren't watching live, I will be watching yeah. live. And then when I tune out, then you'll be watching it. So don't tweet us spoilers. Don't do it. Please. Oh, please don't. Please don't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so there it is. Our uh, 2020 Clash of Champions predictions. Hopefully. I still have that title in my possession. We'll find out. We have Ryan Vogus, Mikey Wilson, and maybe Ian predicting this card as well. Uh, He's welcome. Yeah, it is welcome. So, And if anybody else wants to get involved and you live relatively close, you might if you reach out to us, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. It depends if I'm feeling nice, you know? Correct. Erica Marini, sorry, you're not a part of it. You live in Boston or wherever the fuck it is. I don't even know. East Coast. What a loser. Bum. I, li I actually like you, Erica. Sorry. <laughs> Erica will tweet out anything. It doesn't matter what it says. It's going to get like seven likes. Yeah. Oh, the benefits of being a female on wrestling Twitter. I tell you what. I know. <laughs> I tell you what. We don't get that treatment. I'm trying to slim up for the Twitter, you know, get some 
sex appeal. You haven't tweeted since Nam. No, I know. It's... I'm waiting on a, a wrestling tweet. From th- Even though, like, recently, the only tweets that you have are wrestling related. Yeah, right. I will give you credit there. You do stay on brand with that because yeah, we know uh, Wheelhouse isn't a thing. Hey, Wheelhouse is almost approaching 5,000 career listens, by the way. Do people just listen when they're bored? And... Yes. Like, our lowest show has 80 listens. That's actually really impressive, yeah. even though you guys are not So around. I sent out a text to Mikey and Rat, and I said, bro, we're approaching 5,000 listens. My schedule's freeing up. If, so maybe. If are you going to take want, your equipment after this? Not tonight, no. Okay. God. No, we're months away from probably recording, honestly. So so if you're still listening to this and you're a baseball fan, where would they find you uh, on the social media? At Wheelhouse Pod on, on the tweets. Your last twit. Tweet. Your last tweet. <laughs> <laughs> the last tweet was... Uh, about wrestling, it was August 23rd. Does Otis cash in tonight? He had the briefcase earlier. Hashtag WWE Championship. He did not. He did not. First off, I saw a tweet about that, too. They're like, oh, let's start a thread on what's the worst decision of WWE in 2020. I'll start, and it's Otis with the briefcase. Yeah. I like the match. I mean, the match was cool, but it had to be one of the worst decisions. Yeah. You know what it was not worse than was Goldberg beating The Fiend. At that crown jewel or whatever it was. Yeah, that was... Did, that was bad. That was... Yeah. So uh, that was... Uh, but the Otis winning, like... Uh, then again, who else would you have given that to? Right. That's Alistair what I'm saying. Black. Like, it, was, it was good. Alistair Black. Corbin. They tossed Rey Mysterio off the building. <laughs> Rey so. Mysterio died and came back to life. Not him. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that was talking Otis. We had to get your Otis talk in. We don't talk about heavy machinery enough. No. We don't. And we should more. <laughs> we we might once, <laughs> once they start getting involved more in the storyline. But uh, last thing I want to touch on, because we haven't recorded in a couple weeks, is a little bit of a Wednesday night headlines from NXT and AEW. Uh, I know you haven't watched either of this week's show, correct? But have correct. you been catching up yeah. on previous weeks? Yes. Okay, so you kind of know what's going on. Yeah, like, I'm around. To kick off NXT, there was that women's battle royal to decide the number one contender. Do you yes. know who won? No. If you were to guess who won, who would you I don't you even pick? know the participants. Tegan Knox, Shotzi Blackheart, Candice LeRae, Raquel Gonzalez, Rhea Ripley, uh, Aaliyah, and then that's Ooh, about it. Rhea? No. Tegan? Candice LeRae. Yeah. Candice LeRae wins the battle royal to earn no, a title out. shot. You don't like Candice LeRae? No. Why? I just don't. And I'll have to explain myself. I'm an adult. <laughs> You don't have a, you don't have one good reason why I like Candice LeRae. No, I just don't. Okay, she took out Tegan Knox before the battle royal, so Tegan didn't shock her. Yeah. So Candice LeRae is the new number one contender, and uh, if you look up and down that potential takeover card, and I'm going to spoil another match for you here. I don't know where a title changes because do you really think Candice goes in and beats Io? She shouldn't. You really don't like Candice LeRae. No, I don't. I'm over it. Next. Is it the heel? Like, you like her as a baby face? You like that pure, yes. happy yes. Candice LeRae? Yes. It warms your heart She's inside. Not a, like, she doesn't feel nasty to me. That's fair, though. She she feels like someone portraying to be a bad person. Right. She doesn't She doesn't feel like a nasty. So. I don't think she is. And neither is Johnny. But Johnny could kind of pull yeah. it off. But Johnny also has that, like, baby face feel to right. it. So. Yeah. It's kind of like a trial run with their heel runs. But, yeah, Candice LeRae... We'll uh, face off against Io Shirai. I think that was the right choice. You obviously didn't. That makes sense. It does, because who else really are you going to give to? Because you know who's gone now is Mia Young. Yep. Mercedes Martinez is part of Retribution as well. Oh, I can't wait for their names. What do you think their names are? Oh, it's going to be uh, Pothole and... Tampon. Uh, nope. Oh, that that that. I thought we were going with that one. Uh, Maybe um, Whisk. Yeah, oh, Whisk. Oh, 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 whisk. That's a good know? one. Yeah. I'm just trying to think of utensils right now. You got Slapjack and Waffle Maker. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Waffles or pancakes? Yeah, pancakes. No. I don't. I don't. I'm a butter guy. Butter goes easier on a pancake to me. I you know. Put the butter in the crevices. I know, but it's really hard to manage. It, it becomes. You get little butter bowls. <laughs> What's wrong with a butter bowl? If, well, when you're trying to lose weight, a little bit. Okay, we're not all trying to lose weight and look skinny like you over here. Swag. Humble boy. Swag. I like waffles because they got a little bit of texture. I do. Like, I know something's yeah. there. Like a, a pancake's just mushy. I like the cakey. I, I prefer the cakey type. If you manage it, if you if you drown it in 
syrup, it's an issue. That's true. But you don't want to overdo the syrup. Then it takes away from the pan- everything. The, pan- the waffle is nice, though, because you don't get the waffles all the time. Correct. They're, I, I probably eat one waffle a year. Right. And pancakes are a little bit more steady. I don't even eat so, those. Like, I just don't eat breakfast. No, like, I'm not well, a breakfast I, guy. I'm a huge breakfast guy, but I opt for toast. Over I also pancakes. don't have time to, like, yeah. go the breakfast route. Otherwise, yeah. I would. Yeah. Like that, uh, where do we go? I hop before yeah. Survivor so, Series or War Games it was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Solid, dude. Loved it. Mikey got some, like, cupcake pancake with sprinkles on top. Mikey got dessert. That was disgusting, man. Like He I loved it. And I was talking pancakes and waffles with hey. OTM. And so we got so many. You have to tune into this stuff because you never know what subject's going to come yeah. up. I can tweet it out and say what we're talking about, but where else are you going to hear about waffles and pancakes? What are your takes? I, I do want to hear. Waffles or pancakes? I might even do a poll on our Twitter account. Bogus at, is a pancake guy. You think? Mikey's a pancake guy. Waffle guy. Mikey's a waffle guy. No, I would think Mikey's a pancake mm-hmm. guy because he kind of seems like an, a, a set in his ways, you know, old-fashioned man. Erica, waffle girl. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I don't know who else listens on a daily basis. So we, we Ian. Can't. Ian's a waffle guy. No, just, he's got to be. Just to say, though. Just to say he's a waffle guy because he thinks it's different. That's my... Well, he also thing. is number seven, a part of the... Yeah. Dark Order of OTM. That's Whatever. my guy. He's my henchman. It's <laughs> it's great to be a member of the Dark Order of OTM. I tell you what, we hold all the gold. So Got it. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about on NXT that you also haven't seen the number one contender for Finn Balor's championship. Nope. So the it was the uh, gauntlet eliminator match between Bronson Reed, Timothy Thatcher, Kushida, Kyle O'Reilly, and um, De- uh, Cameron Grimes. Yes. Who do you think won? Bronson Reed. No. Why? You, you wait. You Why? like Bronson Reed? Yes, I'm out. I don't on him. like him as much as Cameron Grimes. Did he win? No, he did not. Timothy Thatcher won. No, Kyle he, O'Reilly. Okay, won the Gauntlet sense. Eliminator match to earn a title shot against Finn Balor, and that's why I wanted to talk about this. Do you like this new direction of the Undisputed Era? We have Roddy and Bobby Fish doing their tag thing. Kyle O'Reilly's off on his own. Adam Cole's kind of just floating for now. Is this is this needed for Undisputed Era? Yeah, um, you you have a few different avenues that they're going, kind of individual but together kind of thing, and um, just to see what it looks like, I think. And Kyle O'Reilly is like a pure wrestler. He's good. I like, do enjoy. He can watching grapple, him. and he's yeah. got the articulated strikes when he like that match with Finn's going to be good. Yeah, there's no doubt. But this is like this might not be a fair comparison to Kyle O'Reilly, but I think Kyle O'Reilly versus Finn Balor is how I'm viewing Roman Reigns versus Jey Uso. Yeah, it should be good. It'll be good. Expected outcome is, I mean... Obvious. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the new number one contenders there on NXT, and we know those matches will be happening next Sunday, so we will have a little bit of a takeover preview as well. So the last thing we're going to talk about is AEW. Have you been keeping up with AEW as much as the rest? I am the furthest away from AEW. Oh, really? I would say, yeah. Okay, so there was a TNT Championship match last night between Brody Lee and Orange Cassidy. Ooh. And I'm going to tell you, you need to take a look at this match. Okay. Because I thought this match was excellent. Mm-hmm. So the story was obviously the underdog versus this monster heel in yeah. Brody Lee. And you know how Orange Cassidy works a match. Uh, there's really no one like this guy. You know, he was collapsing in between moves. Like Brody Lee would bring him up for his clothesline finisher. And then Orange Cassidy would just collapse into a ball. Yeah. Like, it was hilarious. And I think him, like, excelling that exhaustion, is it helps Brody because it makes him look powerful during the match. And it also gets Orange Cassidy over because who else just collapses in matches yeah. and has fun like that? Right. Like, that's definitely a match you need to watch if you haven't watched it. But uh, Brody Lee obviously retained what you would expect. But Orange Cassidy has proven now after beating Chris Jericho – Holding his own here against Brody Lee. It was no squash match that I think he could be a main event star. I don't know what you think about OC. I do. I do, too. And I think the TNT title makes sense because Orange Cassidy is a guy that fans gravitate to. And you want a little bit of a face, like a a recognizable name to hold the gold there. He's the face Uh, of the network virtually. Right. And, And Orange Cassidy is is different and AEW wants to be different and uh I I wouldn't be surprised if he held that. Yeah, eventually down the road. I don't think Brody's the guy he takes it from. Right. Cuz we're obviously still not done after the match. Cody would return post match after 5 weeks of being absent from AEW. He's got new hair look. 
Did you see his new hairdo? No. It's all black. Ew. Yeah. Well, I weird. didn't like oh, the, I didn't like the blonde. Yeah. He should have just went with the natural. Well, the natural. You got a Ooh. natural coat. Should have went with the mullet. I don't think Cody Rhodes can pull that off. Well, you never know. But yeah, so he showed up after the match, confronted Brody Lee. So obviously, that match is on the horizon. And I have a picture right here that I'm going to show you. Bad pa- podcasting of Cody Rhodes' new hair. Ugh. <laughs> I don't with the neck tattoo. No. So uh Brody also cut a promo on this show. He was like, You got your wife over here uh posting thirst traps on Instagram and you can't even get a appropriate tattoo. I'm gonna rip that tattoo off your neck or something like that. There we go. So it's getting heated between yeah. Brody and uh And we're back. Anna Jay and Brandy had a match. They did a one hour special after the NBA game two nights uh, ago. Right. Anna Jay's looking good, man. Her finishing moves, a little chokehold. You know, she got a submission, went over Brandy Rhodes. It's fi- It's nice to see AEW finally giving some attention, though, to the women's division. They need to. And they- one of the biggest ones is Thunder Rosa, who's not a part of I know. Yes. She's cool. Have you seen her work before yeah. this? Yes. She she was at the Warrior Wrestling Show last week, too. Yeah. What was the other? What was the other? Um, uh, Abaddon? Yeah, Abaddon. Where's, where's she, she been? At? Like the creepy, gory yeah. chick? Yeah, I'm in. Yeah, I don't know. She's Another up. one that I liked, and I only like her. I ended up getting one of her T-shirts in my early pro wrestling crates. Sue Young. N- has nothing to do with AEW. Oh, okay. Indy, but okay, she's, got, she's got that creepy vibe as well. So You like the weirdos. I do. You're a big weirdo guy. I, I I've noticed that. Yeah. So in the main event, they had to readjust things because of uh, Lance Archer's situation. Um, John Moxley had a championship match in the main event against Eddie Kingston. You obviously know how that probably went. John Moxley retained his title. Spoiler alert out there if you haven't watched it yet. But I'm very interested to see, though, now that we know Lance Archer has COVID, if he is going to still get that title shot in a couple weeks. Because to me personally, Doug, I feel like we're cutting it close. Yeah. Wouldn't you think? Yeah. They're still advertising it, by the way. <sighs> uh, yeah, we'll just have to see how it goes. But. It's close. You got to start pushing something. I think Lance wins. Yeah. I think you need. I think AEW needs Moxley, a shock. Moxley hasn't like killed it. I don't. But then that. again, is it his fault or is it right? No, I'm not. I'm not blaming him. But because like you could have struck with MJF, like you could have pulled the trigger there. Yeah. I don't know if MJF was ready yet, but Lance Archer seems like a guy I can hitch onto a little bit. Because, like, we always say on this show, the chase for a baby face against a heel is just so much more entertaining, it and it works. So you can have Lance hold that belt for a couple months, and even Moxley could win it back. It could be like a Drew and Randy situation. Yeah. So I don't know. We'll see what happens with there if they decide to have that match. But overall, a very good Dynamite. NXT was pretty solid as well. I'm all caught up. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I had, though, for this week, unless you had anything you wanted to touch on. Raw, SmackDown, NXT, Warrior Wrestling, Black Label Pro that we're going to next Saturday. I'm excited for that. I am excited for the Black Label Pro. There's only going to be like 30 people there. So. We're three, four. Ten, of, we're like 10% of the crowd. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Which I believe you could catch on Fight TV, yes, right? It'll, yeah, so. it'll be on. They just announced Alex Shelley versus Kylie Ray at the noon That's show. That's at 12. I saw I that. It's and, be awesome. and it's so weird because I follow Kylie on Instagram, obviously, which, by the way, Kylie, I know you're listening. So congratulations yes. on your engagement. Uh, yep. It's so weird to see her post about Black Label and then see Crown Point, Indiana in the corner. Uh huh. Like, I like that's where I live. That's cool. That's like, cool. And Black Label does a good job. And we lost a little bit of faith with some of the entrance in Turbo Graps, but uh, it's a very it's a very solid card. Very rounded, solid card. Um, we won't be 40 yards away that the building itself is not 40 yards long. So we're going to be there. Wait, you've been in this building, right? No, I, I've seen videos. It's small. It's yeah. Tight. yeah. You can literally go on YouTube, type in black label pro, and you can see the gym that we are going to be in. Yeah. And it's, it's, uh, it's an intimate setting. Five minutes down from where we're recording this right now. Two minutes from a bar. Which by the way, if anybody wants to pregame a buddy and pals, it'll be a Jimmy cheat day. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You're going to eat lunch with me there, too? I was figuring watch college football, eat lunch. Yeah, just chill, like, chill just for the whole afternoon. I don't care. I already yeah. told the boys, so some of them might you know, show up just to do a little yeah. pregame. And so. 
Yeah, you can and catch us. post game. It'll be what a three hour show, maybe. Yeah, we, we might be post gaming it yeah. there too. So. Might as well keep the party going. Yeah. We got Ian who's underage and he will be driving us. Hip. Thanks, Ian. Shout out to you, buddy. But that's all I got, Tucky. So it's me, you, Vogus, Ian mm-hmm. for Black yep. Devil. Got it. And uh, me, you, Mikey, and Vogus this Saturday at Warrior Wrestling in Chicago Heights. Here we go. Thank you for listening, listening, listening to the On the Mark Wrestling podcast. Make sure you check us out um, on Twitter at Pod on the Mark. I can be found at Jim Tuck eighty nine. Kyle can be found at Too Sweet Kyle. Too Sweet. Once again, thank you for listening to the On the Mark Wrestling Podcast. Thanks for listening to the On the Mark Podcast. Brock Lesnar going for it. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. For more information and updates, make sure to follow us on Twitter at Pod on the Mark. Pod on the Mark.